When I was young, my grandma came to me and told me, Ziyad, انت هتطلع حكيم مثل خالك. She went straight to my other brother and told him, وانت مهندس مثل خالك الثاني. We often receive our career choices in a family arranged packages. And in our society, these packages come with distinct labels. Either a doctor, like your uncle, an engineer, like your dad, or say, a lawyer, like your aunt. Now, whether you agree or not with, this, with this, this list of choices, the truth is it is missing a very important component, which is working on what you are passionate about. And this quest for passion does not end when you join a university or college. Actually, it only starts there. I, for example, I found my passion in creating research-based technology companies that can add a missing component to the world. And it all started from here, from LEU. I was a computer engineering student, like many other students around that time, trying to answer an essential question. Is this right for me? Is this what I want to spend the next 30 or 40 years of my life doing? Assuming that I'm going to survive 30 or 40 years, say, without getting a, a heart attack. But our bloodline is notorious for getting early heart attacks. My father died at the age of 53. It was a very agonizing event. Doctors told me if we could reach him early enough, we could have saved him. The truth is there are electrophysiological changes that take place before a heart attack could happen. And if you can capture these changes early enough, you can send help and reach that patient and save his life. So I asked myself the question, why can't we create an early heart attack alarm? That became the subject of my final year project at LAU. I created a primitive prototype, got an A on the course, graduated, left it at the door, and joined the industry. I worked for a major telecom operator. I was very happy, making more money than I needed, and I was having a new task every day. But there was something missing in my life. I was not passionate enough about what I was doing. So I decided to make a change. I applied for a Fulbright pro program, and in the application I wrote, when I finish the program, I'm going to come back and build a medical technology company here in the Middle East. Now, you can imagine the look on the faces of those who are reading the application. Medical, technology, company, and where? In the Middle East? You guys don't even know how to make a watch, not to mention keeping appointments. <laughs> you must be insane. Well, trust me, sometimes it is absolutely OK to be insane. So I took off to the States, started working on my research and uh, my studies. It was too technical, nothing interesting, until I came across this very enthusiastic course. They bring scientists, engineers, and business students into one class with the aim of creating technology companies. The idea was appealing to me. I joined the course, and I started working with a team on developing a medical technology into a viable business proposition. After a year of hard work, long, sleepless nights, a lot of interviews and data analysis, the idea was up and ready. We pitched it to investors, and it got a lot of success. We won several business plan competitions, raised the funds we needed, and we started a company. The fact is, every year, four to six companies graduate from that single course, raising millions of US dollars and creating hundreds of job opportunities. And that's only one course in one university. What do our courses produce? Are we not able to make something similar or even better? I believe we can. Anyways, I worked with that company for a while, and then I quit and came back to the Middle East to pursue my passion, creating a technology for heart patients. When I came back to the Middle East, I joined a major medical center to learn about the ins and outs of the healthcare system in the region. And when I was ready to quit, people came to me and told me, are you out of your mind? With your job, you can, send your schools to, you can send your kids to the most expensive schools and universities without paying a penny. I was like, guys, I'm not even married. Why should I worry about my kids from now? Why should I lock my dreams and passion for job security? That was around the same time when I came across Stars of Science, which is kind of the Arab version of American Inventor, where they bring people with novel technology ideas into one workshop 
and they have them working on them for 12 hours a day, six days a week for a long five months. I walked out of the workshop with a prototype that can measure your heart around the clock. It monitors your heart, and when it detects a problem, it can locate where you are and send your location, your heart condition, and what you're having to an emergency center so that we can locate you and send you help to save your life. We built a company around that technology, and the company valuation now is in millions of dollars. And it all started. <laughs> from here, from LAU. I want to leave you with two messages. The first, when you find something missing around you, that's a great opportunity for you to innovate and create something that can add value to yourself and to the world. And the second message is something I learned from a famous TED Talk, which is if you want to do something, do it for the passion. And don't worry about the money. Because if you do it with passion, you're going to excel at it. And the money's going to come anyway. Thank you very much.